All right, attention uh, all here. Uh, we're waiting for one more board member to have um, a full board quorum so that you can elect officers properly and confirm the actions that the executive committee took at the last meeting uh, that was for organizational purposes on March 23rd. That's what your agenda is trying to be clear about. Um, and so without convening, uh, Rich is <coughs> suggesting that I go ahead and proceed with my uh, my business, uh, my report. So uh, you have in front of you actually a page that looks something like this that says at the top of the WCSU office staff for FY17. I just want to be you know, entirely clear with you as a point of information about what I'm doing. Now, with Bud DeBonis' departure and taking a position up north, uh, we have the opportunity to look internally, and uh, uh, I've decided to uh, appoint uh, Lori Garland, who's previously been our grants manager, and uh, well, she's done a lot of things over her time at the office, but she knows the ropes of everything financial in her office. <clears throat> and um, so uh, I persuaded her to uh, become business manager. We'll just dispense with the chief financial officer uh, fancy title. and. Uh, she insists upon uh, taking accepting this uh, position on an interim basis, meaning that she'd like the option of saying no thank you if after a year she's, you know, had it. But uh, so take good care of her. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I think she's entirely uh, capable and she has already functioned as a middle level uh, manager for Bud and me regarding the business office. So uh, this, this plan here is a result <coughs> of her individual consultation with members of the team and trying to, uh, what do you say, put it together so it uh, builds on the strengths and actually challenges each to broaden their, uh, their knowledge base and their experience and their capacity. So certainly uh, Randy Morton looks forward to becoming a business manager for a school district sometime. Uh, and uh, uh, Debbie Wood has served for a number of years now. She's been taking all the small schools including Dover and, and uh, Wardsboro and Stratton. Um, so there aren't too many radical changes here, uh, uh, and, and, you know, beyond that, except keep in mind that Leland and Gray, which I did address today at the administrative team meeting, will no longer have a person full-time in the business, you know, as a business office person here. They had their own employee, Carolyn Janess, who's retiring after 30, uh, whatever, you know, anyway, years. And... Um, she certainly preceded me uh, here, and so, um, but she um, she recognizes the need for, uh, you know, she wants to retire, she wants to work less, but we are going to employ her half-time uh, at the WCSU office for some of the same kind of work, and then uh, Randy is going to expand his knowledge base by, by putting in regular hours here at Leona Gray, that, that's to be determined. Um, so as you see, in, in, in total, uh, we have actually reduced the force a little bit, which is kind of miraculous. I think it, it remains to be seen whether these people can take up that, you know, that, that, that opportunity in a positive way and work more efficiently and effectively, but that's our, our goal. Um, certainly you should be aware as boards, individual board members, if you're not getting the quality service that you want financially and so forth, you want to let Bill know. We'll be introducing him later. He's hiding back here behind me for now. Um, and because um, the whole point of this is to make a better functional <coughs> team for you. And I do think uh, you, will, uh, you will see the benefits. We will then be advertising for this accountant to be advertised and hired. Uh, also, I've made it clear to all the staff that, um, I mean, they all recognize in their anxieties over Act 46 that certainly our business office could be con contracted. Uh, and certainly people could be reduced in force if there's less need for eight audits and eight payrolls and eight accounts payable and so forth. So, um, you know, that's a reality and that is one of the anxieties. Now, I, I put this plan together to stay within budget but also to compensate people, uh, you know, better to retain their loyalty and service over this transition time. Um, Moving along, Medicaid, I mean, uh, this, this National <coughs> School Lunch Program, Deb Mears and Medicaid, that continues. Claire John still at, at uh, half, that's her preference. And um, then I, I covered the, uh, on the back page, back of the page, you've got the other administration 
and support positions at the office. We have our dear director of special education, Abby, available to answer any questions should you have them regarding the future of special education. And uh, I don't have the uh, newly appointed uh, Jen McCusick, not to be confused with Cusick, but uh, uh, as the director of curriculum instruction assessment and technology integration. She will start July 1. She has been in consultation some, and we do have a letter of agreement if we need her services or we can employ her on a, you know, per diem or uh, hourly basis as, as may, might be necessary. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll continue with uh, Betty Young, our very effective math coach across the SU. The after school uh, the director, Sarah Fuller. Uh, now, the next little wrinkle beyond that is regarding director of technology. Since Matt has taken position at Dover, we uh, uh, accepted the fact that we will need some support at the central office, uh, technical support, and uh, we reserve that by by having uh, point two of uh, Kevin Burke's full-time position at Leland and Gray transferred to Leland and Gray for FY17. I transferred to WCSU for FY17. Um, he will. He will probably mostly be at Leland and Gray. I don't want to cause anybody to be anxious here at Leland and Gray, but he'll be on call for us. Um, and Allison and Meg continue very ably. Then you have a new uh, organizational chart, and um, it just reflects those positions and the FTEs, so that uh, you know if somebody asks what was going on in the superintendent's office. Um, well, that's kind of the big picture of administration, including the schools and the principals. Questions? It's exciting, isn't it? It's all it's expected. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like beautiful thing. Well, change provides opportunity for, you know, reorganizing and uh, re reconfiguring responsibilities. I do have a, a copy of the job description for the accountant, if any of you are interested. Uh, that we'll post. But my copier isn't working here now, so. I got one copy. Take a picture with your phones or something. Uh, this is just a matter of information, but I guess you can proceed with the rest of the meeting or ask questions as you wish. Well, you got your 15, so you can call it to order. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It is my honor and responsibility to call this organizational meeting of the WCSU board to order. And the uh, time is uh, 7.20. We now enjoy a quorum. So it's time to proceed to the election of uh, president. Uh, president, is that what we call you? No. Chair. Chair. Chair, thank you. I'm thinking of something else going on in the country. Um, <laughs> Chair of the WCSU board, are there nominations? Emily? I'd like to, if, if he's willing to do it, I'd like to nominate Rich. Second, be happy to do it. Okay, Rich is nominated by Emily and seconded by Dan MacArthur. Um, you are happy to do that, sir? Oh, I would be honored. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, are there other nominations? Keep asking first. This is your opportunity. Seeing none and hearing none, uh, I presume you're ready for a vote. All those in favor of uh, electing. Rich Warner as uh, chair of the WCSU board for this fiscal year, uh, coming fiscal year, FY17. Let's see, does it, it, no, it goes, sorry, until Mar until the organizational meeting in March next year, and I don't have the date. If we have a quorum. Year. If we have a quorum, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, the officers continue as necessary, right? Everybody understand the confusion there? Yes. Okay. Typically March. All those favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? It's a unanimous vote, so noted. Take it away, chair. Um, we got election of the vice chairman, which is currently Emily Long. Do we have any nominations for a vice chairperson? I would nominate Emily Long. And do we have a second? Second. Second. Oh, you don't need that for a vice chairperson? No, oh, sorry. Right. Put it down. Close second. And Emily, I'm sure, would love to help us again. <laughs> you guys are such a good pair. Well, thank you. I do like working with him. Do so. Yes. We're all good. If there's no other nominations, no, they're going to dying to be in the limelight, we will. 
All in vote in favor of Emily say aye. 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 Any opposition besides Emily? <laughs> Election of the clerk, this is interesting. Um, our clerk, <coughs> I talked to her, and she's not here. Oh, you are here. Excellent. Are you willing to serve again? You said you were on the phone. I, I, I think I can, but I don't really feel that I did the office much justice this year. I didn't feel like I helped you guys out at all. <laughs> she was busy. Yeah, no, and you were busy, but I mean, you did respond to emails when we asked, so... Is so if there's someone else who thinks they can do a better job, I am I'm very graciously can give it to someone else. And but you can actually if you're really strapped, you I can try yeah. again. It was fairly easy. Rich did all the work, guys. <laughs> yeah, Emily helped. <laughs> she did too, sorry. Oh, Rich is always taking Basically, jokes. what we do is is the officers, you know, the clerk is, is as a, a position is supposed to be the one that when we get sued she's the one that gets served um so it's really it's not but what we try to do is the three officers try to be the ones that put together an agenda that works and and there's a, sometimes there's questions that have to be asked and um and the superintendent will want to bounce some ideas and usually he'll bounce it off the officers whether it's something that should go to the boards or that the superintendent deals with so we have had the the clerk has had to do minutes sometimes in the past and sometimes i'll do them sometimes emily's done them if our, we don't have our great recording secretary over there um or it's not on the video so it's not really a hard a, a lot of work so if there is somebody who has some, has some interest and you would like to volunteer we sure would get you nominated if not if we can get a nomination to be the same clerk as next year but we got elected clerk <coughs> It is a legally required office. Yes. Officer. Actually, I don't want to think more, more so than the chairperson. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to nominate Alicia O'Donnell. <laughs> okay. Don't need a second. Well, we don't need a second. I nominate Al Clausen. I'll second. Okay. Oh. Al, are you interested in the position? Sure. Alicia, are you interested in the position? I will graciously hand it over. <laughs> I know I was not as much help as they needed. So okay. I think well, you we, do we can also have a vote. <laughs> The, 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 let's, let's just, I'm just withdraw, okay. right? I'm so, not going to leave room for air. So gonna... <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. well, I was hoping to get off of like a chicken or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> or a horse. Yeah. Yeah. Horse Maybe horses. Okay, well, we have a, a nomination for Al. Is there any other nominations? Seeing everybody kind of not moving forward. All those in favor of Al as clerk say aye. 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 And anybody but Al opposed? Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Now this year will probably be the year we get sued. But um, we were going to do rec. We, we forget. We skipped over recognition because <coughs> we had Stephen start off at seven. So let's, um, if we could, run right through everybody that's here tonight. We'll start with Al, who just got elected. <coughs> Al Clawson, Townsend Board. Cliff Passano, Townsend Board. Brad Sanderson, Townsend <coughs> Board. Uh, Mike Cusick, Wardsboro. Dave Squire, Wardsboro. <coughs> Dan MacArthur, Marlboro. Lauren Poster, Marlboro. Douglas Core, Marlboro. Emily Long, Leland Gray from Newfane. Rich Winner from Dover. Ken McFadden from Newfane. Joe Winrick, Leland and Gray from Townsend. Uh, Carolyn Partridge from Wyndham. Alicia O'Donnell, Brookline. Laura Sibelia, Dover. And then we got... Stephen John. Oh, here we got... Uh, oh, we got a light here. Well, let um, me introduce you to... Oh, please, go ahead. The <laughs> superintendent-elect, Mr. Bill Anton. Pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you. I need all the backup I can get. Introduce next to Oh, I'm Abby Dillon. Abby Dillon, Dillon. Dillon. Yeah, you're not going to introduce met Abby one. before. <laughs> Okay, I don't think we have anybody else in the audience. So we did, as an executive committee, we decided to, to do some stuff at reorganization just because it needed to be done. We felt it was important to ratify that again, so this may look familiar. Um, the first one is authorized signatures, and that's usually the officers, right, Stephen? Yes, that's what you... Mm -hmm. Do you want motions? Yes, please. I need the officers here. Authorized signatories. 
We need a second for that. Yeah, hang on a second. That's we just make a motion to ratify those. Yeah. 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 So yes. authorized signatures to the officers. Paper of record is the Brattleboro Reformer. Uh, Meetings, yeah. times, and dates are to be announced and. There's a draft agenda of them. Did you bring one of those tonight, Calendar, Steve? I didn't bring a hard copy. Okay, we, we've had it by email before. Right, we, we went over that before. Uh, the treasurer, we appointed the treasurer was. <coughs> uh, you did appoint the treasurer, that was uh, uh, Bud DeBonis. But tonight, let's, uh, well, that should continue to be confirmed Until, because his, the office, right. you know, it can still be in office. But I think we're going to have a time when we'll want. Uh, to make sure that we have an additional treasurer, Lori Garland. But Why let's take it up separately. Can we do that? Can we do that after his exit? Sorry? Can we do it after his exit and appoint him now? And then well, uh, let, let's take up the motion of confirming what you decided. Because yeah. it is and important. Let's do the we'll come back to that. The assistant treasurer was Lori, right? Mm -hmm. No, and that's Terry no, Fletcher. I'm sorry. Fletcher. Yes, Terry Fletcher. And then the surety bonds. Yep. And then grant the superintendent authority to accept grants so if everybody's good with that if we can just make a motion to ratify all the items under three d through j okay so laura made the second. motion do we have a second sure Ken. Second. uh i'm sorry joe joe, joe from leland and gray is there any discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Okay. any opposed <coughs> any abstentions should we appoint the treasurer and the Yes, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, but it would be logical to appoint just based on the fiscal year. But in fact, I believe it would be wise to pick a date earlier than that. Uh, Bud is going to be going on vacation, I think his last day is June 15th. And uh, it's going to be a transition for when he takes his new office. So uh, I think we could appoint Lori effective that date or even earlier if, if it were necessary. I don't know. It's a little touchy because I don't think it's wise to have two treasurers elected at the same time. But well, we can elect her to be treasurer starting on the yeah. on the fifteenth. Then I would suggest. And so, Laura moves. Do we have a second? Second. I don't know. Who <coughs> Peter Damacarthur. Uh, I second. Oh, so he's late on, on the Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. that's well. It's Wednesday. 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 So that she would become effective that date. Is there any discussion? Any issues? Any problems? Okay, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? And any abstentions? No. Yeah, sorry, was that grant superintendent authority or was that something else? No, I'm sorry. The, the, we grant the superintendent authority except grants, and that was part of the ratification earlier. And it's these positions, so who's ever in the position at the time can accept the grants. We don't name the superintendent. We approve the motion clarified. Oh, the last one we just did? Yep. So what do you have for a motion? Uh, that's what I don't have. Okay, the motion was to appoint Lori Garland, treasurer, effective June 15th, <coughs> 2016. That was made by Laura. Dan MacArthur seconded it. Or Carolyn. Carolyn. Either one. <laughs> we give it to Dan. We'll give the next one to Carolyn. Okay. <laughs> and all voted in favor. <coughs> You're welcome, sir. So we're up to four review and revise agenda and possible action. Um, does anybody have any revisions to the remainder of the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to ask for one, and it's going to be under new business, and it's going to be a letter E, and it's um, I'm going to spring this on one person. I've talked to two others, um, but we have three members here that are in legislature. They go to Most Peculiar for a long time in the winter and do a lot of, I think, sitting around drinking coffee and talking to people. I don't drink coffee. You don't drink coffee? Tea? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I thought um, maybe we give them a couple minutes just if there's, um, you know, Emily serves on education, Laura <coughs> serves on economic, economics, and commerce, commerce, and Carolyn serves on ag. Sure. Ag and forest products. Ag sure. and forest products, like firewood. Yeah. Sure. She's chair. 
And right. so I thought we would give um, we give them a couple minutes if there's anything that came up during the session that may affect the schools or something special that they wanted to tell us about. I thought it'd be nice to give them a couple minutes because I've been bragging for a year now that we've got so many people in legislature from this area. It's really helpful to us, especially as we move further down the Act 46. Um, towards that towards something with act 46 you know we, we may have to ask for some clarification or maybe a little change in the law and it would be good to have a lot of legislators on our side so if nobody has a problem with that i'll add that as, as letter e right so if there's nothing else under old business confirm approval of the fy 17 agency fund budget so we just need a motion and a second on that and that agency fund we've always held till after town meeting in case any of our budgets get slashed and we may want to have to adjust that but we we did ratify it or we did approve it because the superintendent needed to offer contracts so the executive committee did approve it um i don't think we have any copies of it but if anybody has any questions i'm sure Stephen can come up with some answers for us so i'll entertain a motion to approve it uh i'll approve that Okay, so Ken will move the second. Second. Carolyn gets her second. Are you all set there, sir? Sir. Okay. I am curious, Steve, approximately how much money are we talking about in that agency fund? Uh, $3,664,375. Okay. 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 Uh, the, uh, the grants uh, budget separately, uh, taken separately, uh, in addition, is close to $2,199,800. 608 and the the superintendent's uh, proposed budget is uh, was approved at two million two fifty two three five two. Um, the agency fund includes these itinerant teachers uh, and uh, the the uh, the grants budget um, is really not a budget. It's just that this is the estimate of what grants we think we're going to receive and how we're going to employ people, and that's why you have that motion about the superintendent accepting the grants. Um, I do have a three-part thing here if you want to look at the details. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All set thing. Any other questions or comments or thoughts? Well, I would point out to the public too that the the, the WCSU employment is expanding largely because of taking on the special ed paraprofessionals and and you know basically the law of obliging more centralized employment um, and, and contracts um, so and we certainly have now the obligation three districts or four districts of, of the superintendent contracting for the transportation as you know and it's a money in money out thing but that's not you know that wasn't reflected in this budget well, the agency fund budget pretty much is money in money out because that's it's, right it's the same yeah right. it's, just, it's an assessment our direction and then we employ the service and that's that's really what we have to do now with those bus contracts yeah. so next year they'll it, it'll look like that's really expanded a lot but it's yeah you know. well it's it's interesting when we went to testify at the senate last year um the senate ed committee myself and the chairman vice chairman of the select board did and we were talking about what Wyndham Central does, <coughs> where how we have this agency fund thing, and it was amazing that they looked at us like we had six heads because they just didn't never heard of that before. And there's even some school. I had some people call from Southern Vermont, from further south of us, um, asking the same question about employing. You know, like they couldn't employ a gym teacher because they could only give them like a day and a half a week. And you know, I suggest said, well, in Wyndham Central, this is what we do, and. A lot of people have never heard of that so you know I, I think we've always kind of really been at the cutting edge and I you know I don't know if, if there's anybody here that can take credit for it I think it was I a think Frank, Frank. I, I, I yeah. Frank's, Frank's idea about how to get you guys but no, but Frank isn't here anymore no, so no. but I mean it's it's something <laughs> that you know credit for it. okay so Stephen <laughs> Stephen developed it in Latin. so I, I think I've made sure it hasn't gone haywire <laughs> I'll put it that way okay yeah. Yeah. I've been doing it yeah, no, it's it's been like twenty something years because it's been it was before, before I, I was it was on the before board. I started ninety nine. Um, so if there's no other questions, all those in favor of, a, of ratifying the uh, agency fund budget, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, Peter, did you yeah. get the number for the agency fund? Uh, I was going to ask you for that. Uh, I'll, later, I'll call it. I'll call it out to you again if you okay. if you will. 
three million. Yep. Six six four. Six four. Three zero six. Hey, Stephen. Yeah, maybe. <coughs> are they on the website? Well, I. I can't say for sure. I, I was looking for the minutes. Let's, today, but let's just make it. sure it's on the website. Yeah, post on the website. Okay. And then I think all, all, three, all three should be. Grant's budget. Yeah, all three of them should be. I, I found the superintendent's budget once, but I, now I can't get into the darn. I, and my steam We colleague. should have that under the WCSU yeah, it's not here. board, I think, uh, on the board website. I don't it's, see that there's another logical place for it. The, the, when we get back to minutes, I have some confusion. Yeah, and I'm, about I'm that. sorry. So, I was noticed that I, so I skipped just found, I just found this. Um, it's not really clear. I just found it on your website, Stephen. It's it um, it right on the home page, and it's got all homepage. of your school budgets here. Yeah. And it says WCSU final approved superintendent's budget. Right. So I haven't really. Because that's the only thing we legally had a had probably. Uh, um, but it also the lists um, the front page. It lists all three oh, budgets does? here. Oh, okay. It doesn't say anything about. But it doesn't give you the detail necessarily. Mm, no, but, but I haven't been. I haven't been down through here in <laughs> some reason. I'm not on the. I'm not on fast internet for some reason. I'm not oh, really? I'm loading all this. Okay. Well, thank you. But for I think it might be. Here. And it's on the home. It's, it's on the home page under the board. It's it's oh, it's 2014. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. He says it's last year's budget. Okay, I'll get that fixed. Thanks. Approved yep. by full board yep. 12 it's three, last 14. Year. So we'll get that updated. Yep. And then, yeah, I got to go back to the minutes. I, I jumped over that and nobody yelled and screamed. So, number five, approve the minutes of the March 23rd. That was our executive committee because we didn't have a full board. March 29th, which was the Leland and Gray Act 46 meeting with the Leland and Gray towns. Executive committee and April 18th was another executive, so it's all three executive committee. Well, uh, yeah, I suppose so, yeah, yeah, because we couldn't meet as a full board. Right. So the minutes are up here, I believe. If anybody yeah, wants, I have copy. hard copies here. If anybody's curious about any of those three, anybody want to yeah, okay? I'll take a look at them. I was trying to find them online. Yeah, well, here's why I'll explain to you how, how it's hard to find them online or why it's hard to find them online. The, uh, the minutes for your board, the first one on the 23rd. That appears under the WCSU board on the website. But the other two appear under Act 46. So if you go to that page, I'll be there. Yeah, if you go to that page, folks out there, <laughs> that has all the boards, yeah. you know, go school board, oh, you'll see oh, on the left hand side there's an Act 46 yep. information. Yep. And if you go to that information page, you'll find these other two sets that have to do with Except Act 46. Anyway, there's three. <laughs> sound like my husband. You guys want? You guys want a hard copy over there? Anybody? Space. Three. <laughs> no. Okay. You want it? Yeah. Because I know you. So we have an option. We can do them all together, or if somebody wants to pull one out because there's corrections, <laughs> we can do that. Is there a motion? No, no motion. Yet. I'll make a motion to approve all three. Okay, so I have a motion by Ken to approve all three. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a second from Joe. Is there any discussion? There, they're still kind of looking. Are you guys ready to vote? Okay. Is there a change? Uh, it just says something about Brad saying that the Townsend Select Board was at our last meeting. <laughs> I don't remember that I think. being the case. Yeah, <laughs> highly unlikely. Yeah. Okay, which which you said which? Yeah, man. Uh, the uh, April eighteenth. April eighteenth. Yeah, what item? Why don't we pull them out then? If nobody has a problem, so we'll, we're going to just vote on the twenty third and twenty ninth. Okay. Barbara, are you guys all good? You're. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. Uh, we got the twenty third, twenty ninth. You guys <laughs> good with removing that from your motion and second? Yes. Yes. Okay. March 23rd, March 29th, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, April 18th, Brad, you want to just tell? Somebody should make a motion. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve so he can correct that. Okay. Mm. Motion to approve, but do we have a second? Second. Carol seconds it. Brad, do you have a correction? Um, let's see. On page two, under the... Townsend line item. 
I would strike just a simple note just to strike the Townsend Select Board was there. Um, it indicated that they were at our meeting and they weren't. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Are you good with that, sir? I'm good with that. Strike which, though? Okay, so under Townsend on page two, Mr. Sanders reported that. Um, yeah, it's a second sentence. The Townsend Select Board was there. That just should be struck, stricken. stricken. Lee Townsend Select Board was there. Was that when, when you went to their board or not? I don't oh. think we ever went. I think no. we, yeah. they were talking about Jamaica had gone around to the other oh. boards. Yeah, so that's yeah. probably yeah. what yeah. it was. I think maybe it was just mm -hmm. a misunderstanding. It was yeah. the Jamaica board, not. I so think you might be right. Yeah, Jamaica yeah. yeah. board. Right. Yeah. So the second sentence would be the <coughs> nurse and in joining us side by side as a pre K twelve. Mm -hmm. You good with that, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead. Different one. <laughs> yep. No, uh, just above where it says Wordsboro should be uh, just correct meeting to say meeting. Come on. It is Wordsboro. Meeting. Did you find that one bigger? They have another correction. What page meeting was spelled on page what? It's what? the same page. It's like two paragraphs above the one you just corrected. I'll find it. Us. Under <laughs> Wardsboro. <laughs> this meeting has a left off the G on the meeting. <laughs> so that's the way they talk over there. So it's <laughs> easy. Either that or put yeah, in posture after that. the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so with those two corrections, if everybody's yeah. good, we will vote on it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Any abstentions? Okay, we have to ratify the WCEA WCSU <laughs> Teachers Master Agreement contract. Joe, I think you were on that committee, and who else? Um, uh, Ken? Ken and I was, Stephen. Yeah, I was, uh, but uh, we had it. I think that's all the members that we have here. I know the Marlboro Board came to one of the sessions, or at least some representatives. This is part of that negotiations we had about the master teachers agreement. Yes. I think you and Jen, Jen are yeah. with me. Yeah. This was prior to the transfer. But they weren't negotiating. They were just, they were just, they were just we were observing. Present, observing. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need a motion to approve the agreement a second, and then we can have some discussion okay. about it. So moved. Okay, so Joe moved. Ken seconds it to, um, I guess it would be to authorize the chair to sign the, the agreement, the WCA, WCSU Teachers Master Agreement. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and you or Ken... Let us know if there's anything we need to know. Didn't didn't we already do this? Yes. We did we're just ratifying. Right. Okay. <laughs> but um, we did, we're people, doing it officially because we've got a full board. Okay. I was like, wait, we already did this. Yeah. <laughs> um, boy. Um, I don't have it with me, so I'm like, what are the highlights of this one? Well, oh, it's, thank you. Yeah. Well, Steven, you I'd give you the high points. Yeah, okay. give me the high points uh, on this one. I've, it's, uh, it's based on a 2% new money, uh, and it ha continues the same health benefits without an increase on either side in terms of percentage. Of course, the amount of money is probably increased, but, um, and uh, it's everything was budgeted. I mean, this, this agreement is within the but what we budgeted in the agency fund and any people that are covered in your various school districts for this. Uh, so, and I, I, everything seemed, well, in fact, we got it done in about three sessions. Mm -hmm. It was, which was only exceeded by the two-session agreement we got with the para, para contract and support services. So we enjoy excellent relations with the union negotiation team, and I hope that you can continue in that way. And it's a one-year. It's a one-year. One-year deal. That's good. There important. Was, there was. When we did this, there was a three-year agreement that we had done a one-year extension to that had some language changes, and we integrated those language changes into this and spent some time cleaning up the document um, where it referenced um, things that were no longer true. Like the like Department of Education. Or Department of Education and things like that. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, there were no substantive changes. Okay. Any comments, questions, sir? Was the 2% straight salary or salary? No, it, it's... it's uh no let's see we it was within what we budgeted we budgeted for the uh increase in the health health premiums uh, and the two percent was the new money we didn't argue we left the health like agreement you know because it's a 
time bomb or volatile or whatever, and, and it's just as well to continue and uh, because you can win and lose on that one pretty badly. So uh, that was the judgment of both teams, both both negotiating sides, to leave, leave that one as it is. Because we, as employers, I don't want to advertise this too much, but we do pay the least percentage of any uh, supervisor union in the well, state. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, zero is cat's out of the bag now, but no, they all know that. I mean, it's, you know, we've negotiated a good, uh, you know, a good situation regarding health premiums, so we don't, we'd like to leave it that way if we can, as long as we can. That's the strategy of, of the present negotiating team. Who knows what happens next fall. Once again, that, that, as we, time rolls on, it gets closer and closer to what really changes have to be implemented. And, and the reason we're doing one years are just because of the uncertainty That's and right. we don't know where Act 46 is going to, is going to lead us to. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Act 46 and health insurance. Yeah. 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 More health insurance. More, more, more health insurance. <laughs> more affordable <laughs> health care. Uh, right. That's. Any other comments, thoughts, questions? Y'all ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. So, you abstaining? Could aye. we just note one abstention? Yes, sir. And I signed it, Stevens. So you you got to just get it to your boards, I guess. Okay. So, on, on, on number seven, we covered the report on WCSU staffing for FY17. Was there any questions on that? We, I think we had a chance to ask and there was nothing. So we'll go to confirm dates for the WCSU board retreat meeting. That's actually gonna be your first board retreat, Mr. Antone. What do we have down there for a date? October, September, I don't have it. Date of the board retreat, Stephen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hope I got it in here. I know we were talking about September uh, or thereabouts. Maybe I can call up that document if anybody if anybody looks up. Is it on the have it, I, it was sent out. It should have been on the draft calendar. Yeah. I don't have mine. Oh. Well, hang on. We'll get to it here in a second. September. Trouble is, I may we may not have entered it yet. No. Well, we usually shoot for the fourth Wednesday. Yeah. <coughs> the fourth Wednesday in September. I mean, the question is whether you want, at one time you met, you know, in, in August. But I really think everybody's kind of settled, preferably on yeah, September. Yeah, I don't remember August was a, we did a full day retreat. The last time I remember in August. I think, and then we've been in September, October, depending when we could get people together. Yeah. Okay, so the 4th, uh, 2016, the 4th Wednesday in September is the 28th. September 28th, 2016. Okay, oh, no, that's March. What month am I here? Anybody on. know what they're doing? Hang on. What's the date you're talking about? September 28th. Everybody better check me here. Oh, I, I, I know the sense. It's not <laughs> right. Oh, it's not right? No, I just, you said the you Wednesday before. Doing. Doing. I'm going to that meeting. <laughs> No, that's uh, not the retreat. That's not the retreat. That so must be somebody else. Do you have the calendar there? That may be Marlboro's retreat. No. No, we're July 18th. Yeah, that's what he's saying. July 18th is Marlboro's retreat. They're a little further south, but it comes earlier. They're, they're, they're on the... They're you on say the 21st put it on the calendar, man. It's there. 21st and October 28th. Everybody check their calendars Wednesday the 28th. Yeah, that's the WCS. So September 28th, is that okay to do the retreat? Sure. Does anybody have an issue with that? Or you look alarmed? No, you look pensive. Awesome. Okay. It's Wednesday, September 28th. What time? Uh, usually we start at like, cocktails start at 5 and we dinner's at 6 and 6.30 we start our lesson. 
September 28th. September 28th. Five. Yeah. Depends how many cocktails people have between five and six. Sometimes. Call it five days. <coughs> no, we tr we want we've always requested to be kept in Wyndham County. I mean, in in Wyndham Central's area, not Wyndham County. So it kind of limits it. We've done it in Stratton. Um, yeah, maybe four columns. We used to do it at E.G. Zach's. Last time we did it at. Um, it West, the uh, we did it at, Grand at the Grand Summit. Grand Summit. Yeah. We've done it twice there. The first time we weren't very happy. The second time we thought it was a little bit better. Mm -hmm. We did it at Cooper Hill Lodge. We did it at the Hermitage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so maybe Bill four they columns mean, in. They make a mean guilt for the you guys are running the show. I'm just, I'm your employee. Yeah, I know, but we, we, we have to negotiate the price. Yeah, yeah you got to negotiate to get it covered. you got to negotiate the price. So why don't we just make a motion to have our retreat September 28th, and then at a future okay. meeting we'll determine or we'll send something out to people. So moved. Five o'clock. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Discussion. September 28th. September 28th. 5, 5 p.m. to be determined by our, our our superintendent. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any uh, any any abstentions? Okay. Superintendent questions and reflections discussion. Well, yes. it depends on <coughs> your time, how much you want to discuss. But I do have in front of you a, a sheet that is titled. WCSU superintendent's evaluation questions. So as you know, you gave me uh, <clears throat> support for having a different approach to my final evaluation year here. So I have these, um, oh, did you get a hard copy of that? Let me yeah. see. Yeah. He's got it. He's got it. All right. Um, so uh, I've shared this earlier today with the, uh, with the administrative team. Uh, I don't expect you to write your answers down on this paper at all, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to look over the questions tonight uh, just to kind of prime the pump. It's actually going to be issued to all, all of you in, uh, for individual anonymous response by um, SurveyMonkey. Bill Anton has put that together for me. And the purpose of this is, uh, on the one hand, to really be candid about what you think uh, has been accomplished under my tenure, or, and particularly this, this more recently, but my tenure, <coughs> and what really you wish would have done, could have been done, and, and thereby give Bill, I'll share this with Bill, a very clear picture of what, what to build on and, and, and where to go. Uh, it's uh, unusual, and it's open-ended, and it's, it's you know, probably you've seen to some of you like another term paper you have to write or something, but, uh, you know, you can be as brief or detailed as you like. But I would appreciate, um, you know, having this kind of, as we say in Marlboro, a capstone project uh, <laughs> for the eighth graders. Uh, and so these questions have been put together uh, with Bill's uh, editing uh, so that they, you know, do, uh, do serve. Uh, both of us as we accomplish this transition. And just ahead of time, I'll thank you. If there's any need for clarification, I hope you let me know so I can, we can get that edited before I issue it, because I haven't sent it out yet. But I do have in mind sending it out to all the board members, all the WCS office staff, the teachers, paraprofessional support staff, and the WCSU administrative team. Okay. So, yeah. go ahead, Dan. I, I just have a question on the, on the second page under <coughs> 156. I'm not sure that's uh, grammatically con correct. Incentives for voluntary form reds. Oh, for voluntary, form, yeah. Or, uh, for voluntarily forming. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Or something, anyway. Voluntarily, huh? It's, it's, it's going to be grammatically correct. It's going to be grammatically It's ready to roll. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> my editor didn't get that. <laughs> Um, we're sensitive thank you. about surveying. That's right good. Now, so. Yes, I bet you are. I, uh, so, uh, yeah, but you, you and uh, this was just by example. I mean, some of you don't have experience with those various acts or anything necessarily. Say, as I said, I try to encourage people. You know, particularly as I can imagine a paraprofessional looking at this. There's a lot of stuff that, but you know, just skip over it. Uh, yeah, you have that right in there. You yeah, I put in the directions at the beginning. If you have nothing to offer, skip it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to put people in a position where they're trying to feel obliged to make up something. This is not the point. Just 
you know, pass. I'm quite them. imaginative with Stephen. I can make up a lot. <laughs> I tell you, this is an opportunity for creative writing. You know, I mean, those of you who are into creative writing, uh, sense of humor, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm opening my, I'm opening the door to anything. You know. Uh, and uh, it'll be a massive amount of reading, I imagine, but it'll be rewarding and it'll be informative. And, and it, it, then you know. we, we will share this with the, the board, probably the officers like we used to then? Yeah, I okay. think the highlights. There should be some synopsis so, of it. I mean, there's some synopsis. Now I should have got it. Right. Well, <laughs> what I, the superintendent's evaluation <laughs> process is via the uh, officers. He, we usually we usually do the evaluation, but this, we did it different this year. Um, and Stephen was going to phrase it for some questions and things he thought was important to leave us with. So we'll meet with him, and then we can bring it to the board at the next board meeting and let them know where we stood. And then um, and then the new superintendent will have it. So it's not hard. It's not bad. <laughs> and Stephen yeah. buys you lunch. Yeah. No, that's great. Okay, <laughs> you can do that if you like. But, uh, so is there any other questions? Everybody good with this? And you'll put it out on, you'll give us a link to the survey monkey. That's and right. So what we should though, Stephen, you know, not a deadline. To, yeah, we, we definitely need to have a, a deadline. And so it's ready to go. Stephen has it as his, his disposal. I didn't, I didn't put it out yet because I wanted to wait till this meeting, but I, get out I don't think tomorrow. there's anything we have to approve. No. Because it's more of a, uh, or for Steve More of information, but correct, uh, correct my grammar. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> uh, I can. Let's do that. Okay. So if there's no. Let's other go for high standards. We're going to expect them to write well. If, if there's no other comments, then we won't have all the numbers to play with this year. Oh, we got another one. Where did I find it? It's it. it. Oh, we are really We're missing an it. Number it's six, six on the first page. Number six is it. In what ways is the CSU, WCSU better than it was six years ago? Gosh, that is excellent. All right. Watch those articles. <laughs> right. If you notice any grammar, email it to Bill. And pronouns. Or you can just pick out the words. Only A's. Okay. okay. If uh, if there's uh, we could just take out was and if. That's all right with you, right, Emily? Just take out was and if. Take out Lauren. Take out Lauren. Take out Lauren. Lauren. This is Emily. Emily Stephen. Lauren. 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 You're getting old. Good thing I'm retiring. Yeah. You're too excited. If there's if everybody's good with this, we will move right along <coughs> to. Thank you. Introduce Bill Antone as superintendent beginning July 1st, 2016. Yeah. Well, right up here. Yeah. Yes. So at the last meeting that wasn't really a meeting, that was an executive meeting, committee meeting, we asked Bill to maybe give us a couple minutes of just any thoughts, changes, because this will really be the last time we meet as a super, as the um, superintendent, supervisory full board. Um, and, and then Bill will take over July 1st. Um, I guess, Stephen, you're leaving June 20th. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave designate and have things yeah. straight. So um, I, we just asked Bill to kind of give us, you know, any thoughts, anything he needed from the board or will need from the board or what his plans were um, with the board, you know, over the summer until we start into our meeting schedule. Um, and we'll be doing a lot of Act 46 stuff, I'm sure. We'll know more about that in two weeks, but congratulations. Good Thank to you. have you on board. Thank you. Um, as I look around, other than Cliff, I think I've met everybody had at least a semi conversation if not long. very long conversation <laughs> uh, so I feel very lucky so I mean I, I think I, I applaud the, the transition plan for the last 15 months um, it was March of last year that you guys gave me this opportunity and so it's been a long time for us to kind of get to know each other um, and so I feel very uh, fortunate to step in uh, July 1st, and so I appreciate that opportunity. Um, I really like to laser focus. Um, I don't like to spread myself too thin, and um, so the one thing that I really would like from all of you is, um, I'm going to give it back to you, is your first page of your strategic plan uh, that you last discussed formally in August of 2013 and 
the administrative team has reviewed it since then. And so on one side without the header is the one from the administrative team draft. And that's based on the law change, uh, educational quality standards, um, discussions. Um, so what would really, really be helpful for me and the team that we're building at Wyndham Central is to know where's the target? Where do you want us to focus? Where do you want us to create action steps? Where do you want us to place our chips? And this is really, this, this gets it. This is the heart. Um, and then that gives us an opportunity to build kind of the work plan that we can then give to you. We can report on on a quarterly basis. And you guys can give us feedback on our progress. Um, so that's really my big one thing. I have a couple little things that I'd like to ask. So you think this would be maybe for that retreat meeting to go go over this and that gives people the summer to discuss it? Would, it? it would be great if possibly in your individual boards you guys could discuss it so that when you came to that meeting, you came <coughs> very informed to make that efficient. You know, We like 90% of it, we like 5% of it, and but come exactly with your, your thinking. So that could be a very efficient time in September. Um, most of those things, um, you know, that law is going to focus a lot of our strategy, and so we will be doing that planning now. But uh, it's really important for us to know as a team, all the principals, central office staff, where you want us to go. What do you want to hold us accountable for? Um, we'll give you guys measures, and you'll say, we don't want those measures. Those aren't good enough. Those are too detailed. Give us something more broad. Um, but that starts the conversation. So that's my big ask. If you could bring it back to your individual boards, and then on the 28th, if you could really crystallize that. Two thoughts, questions mostly. Yeah. Um, when we have our retreat in the past, we've always really uh, benefited from and encouraged the administration to attend the retreat with us. Yes. And so I'm. I guess that's my question, are we going to continue to do that? They'll all be there. That'd be great. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And the, um, the second thing was, if we're going to be asking individual boards to have this conversation and be prepared for this, I don't know who should be doing it, whether it should come from you or somebody else, but it would be really important if we sent an email out to all boards and especially making sure the chairs are aware of this so it gets on agendas. And, you know, with this quick request of what we want the boards. It would be really important, I think, for all board members to know what this what this request is so that we're ready for this conversation in and, our individual you, meetings. You should, you'll probably have met with every board before the retreat, so mm -hmm. it may yeah. be better, you know, <clears throat> after, you know, you become the new band. Um, to just send get it out to every every email. board chair and, and then sure. just make sure it gets on an agenda. But I would suggest that, you know, send it out to board chairs, but I think all board members should hear, you know, not just chair, you know, the request for chairs to put it on the agenda, but all board members to hear your, your what you're asking us to do. So would it be beneficial if I drafted a, something about what I just talked yes. about, maybe gave that yes. to the officers, you guys okay it, and then we send it out? Sure. It'd be great. And it's going to be in the minutes, so hopefully people read the minutes. Okay. It'll be on TV, maybe they'll watch TV. No problem. There you go. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, and then, so then a couple little easy well, ones. Hang on. Okay. So on the big ask, does anybody else have any comments, thoughts, concerns, anything they want to bring up, any grammar they want to correct? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's possible, but I would love to, at our retreat, to get from you um, your thoughts about how well we've been doing with, with all of this. Um, you know, how, do, are we graduating all our high school students, that kind of thing? Sure. We have some really wonderful goals on here. How are we doing with those goals? Be nice to know. A report card. Okay. Be tough, but mm -hmm. big, that's a big ask. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is a big ask. It's huge ask. <laughs> it. But yeah. it's one thing to say this is what we want. It's another sure. thing to find out if we're doing it. And if we're not, why? Uh, what can we do about it? Exactly. Yeah. That's that's why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can get you that, but I'll 
I'll try. I'll talk to the. Talk to Steve. I'll talk to the big man who. <laughs> yeah, we. Actually, if, uh, I had in mind reporting on some of these goals uh, in a more comprehensive way, at least the ones that we have data on. But I have to say, switching around the board meetings and the Act 46 is really yeah, just. Yeah. You know. Board of Ed's done a wonderful job getting us off track. Our goals. Um, yeah, uh, that is that is takes a great deal of uh, time and energy and discipline to to stay focused on both. You want that credit? Yeah, it's good with it. Lauren, Emily just corrected you though. It was the legislature that did that? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I didn't want to blame anybody in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> Any, anything else on the big ask? For, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so there's some fairly specific things in here, and, and uh, I just wondered if we could have some yeah, yeah. resource information for next generation science standards, Vermont framework of standards, and learning opportunities. Um, just where would we be able to find the specifics on some of those things? Okay. Uh, would it be valuable to uh, have a digital copy of this with things? Yeah, yeah. It'd be great. Okay. That'd be great. Aren't they on the BOE they're site? All, anyway? They're all on, on the yeah. BOE. Yeah, they are on the BOE, but, but in it's one nice to have a document. That, that can come with the letter that is approved yeah. by the officers. Yeah. Yeah. Make it very linkable. Okay. And, you know, the other thing, Bill, I hate to kind of add to you, but maybe just a little background on this. You know, there are we, spent a, we spent a long time, mm -hmm. you know, um, those of us around the board when this happened. Right, we, we did this with Wendy, we really worked hard, and we've been asking for it for a lot of years before Wendy was here. So maybe just kind of like what a strategic plan is, and you know, just so that people understand that. It doesn't have to be long sure. and involved, but I mean, there was a lot of effort put in to get to us to where we are. And you know, one of the things Stephen did, you know, is he didn't just throw it out. You know, he kept bringing it up to the ATM. He did have us review it a few times when he needed changes in it. So, and it's supposed to be a living document, you know, that we, we don't just, you know, approve and say, pat ourselves on the back, put it in a box and, you know, forget about it. No, that's, that's great. That's why I get to run it by the officers. Anybody else? Any comments, thoughts? Excellent. So, your little asks? So, my little asks are just uh, things that I'd like this board to, <coughs> to think about. Um, uh, Thinking long term is the location and the um, uh, upkeep of our current facility for the WCSU office where we want it to be. Is it an opportunity to relook at where some uh, other locations might be cost effective, uh, better fit the needs? I don't know, but I don't think we've done that. Um, it just might be a good review kind of thing. Um, I did a little research, and I think the last time you guys did a, uh, a selection of a location. This board created a committee and you kind of filtered through the options. So I would just like you guys to consider if maybe the time is <coughs> to do something like that again. Um, do, do you want us? We can put, we, the super, or this board has the authority to put together a committee if you want to do I, that. I would <laughs> like you to consider if that is something you would like to do. So when Cheryl was superintendent, they were in Timpson Hill and somebody fell. Abby, that's right. And you were out for a while, weren't you? No. Oh. I was out for a while. But I felt you were hurt for a while. Hurt. And so Cheryl we we formed a committee to look in, in locations and Dan McCarthy was on the board. Yeah, I was on I was on the committee. Where you and I and there was a couple other board members. I thought you might have been Tom Tom Stats maybe mm -hmm. from Brookline. Someone wanted it to be centered over in Dover. I remember that. That was me. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, the reason I wanted it in Dover is we actually have office buildings that have, yeah, you know, it had high-speed internet and had parking and not a dirt parking lot. It actually was ADA accessible. Close to your house. We did. No, it wasn't anywhere near my house. We went and looked at The other thing, though, Cliff, you'll know, is there was a bunch of bars real close, too, so some of the staff was happy about that for after work. Um, so anyways, um, but at that time, Frank Rucker was real, used to use the buses to get stuff out, so it was important to be in this area. But the other opportunity we have now, too, is as we looked at Act 46, and 
and declining enrollment, you know, one of the things we did look at was Leland and Gray, you know, some space at um, separating some of the offices and some space at different <coughs> schools that had extra rooms. So it may be a really good time to look at that in light of Act 46 and, and have a start. So if we want to do that, we can make a motion to have a facilities location committee. We can appoint four or five members from the board. You can allow the chairman to appoint. And what we can do is anybody has any interest can submit their names and we'll put them in a hat and pull out the winners or losers, however you want to look at it. And then you <laughs> will make, um, when the superintendent's ready to start calling some meetings, it'll be in place for them. Yes? I don't want to be on the committee, but if you don't have enough people, I will do it. Well, I think I, let's, I don't want to be let's make, if, if you guys are good with that, if there's no questions, let's, really let's just. Uh, survey. Okay. Go ahead. It's, it's not a question, it's more of a comment. Yep. Um, as, I, I think this is a great idea. Honestly, we, we know we have mold problems. We know we have Cream. parking problems. We know we have, you know, uh, mice <laughs> and other things where we Fall are located. So I think this is a great idea. I'm just wondering whether there's, um, the t of the timing of all this, given the, the possible changes that are happening with Act 46. I guess my thinking was that w this could solve all those things. It might okay, not so be. Okay, so you're trying it, to align the conversation with some of that. It could be a, something that we do in three or four years. Because, but I'd love to see what's out there. What is the inventory out there? What is our internal inventory in our buildings? What's the inventory in our areas in our towns? What does the landscape look like? I have no clue. Because it's still important for everybody who doesn't know to know that uh, our our supervisor union can't own property; we can yeah. only rent. So. Um, but the, my thing is, is this, this committee may not meet for six or eight months. It's not like we're going to start meeting tomorrow. It just, it's, if we okay, make tomorrow. the motion to approve it, we get it formed, and then when the superintendent says, hey, it's time <coughs> to start having meetings, it's not like, oh, well, we don't have a meeting for two months to get it set up. It, it's already there for him. Or if there's an opportunity that comes knocking on the door, like the pizza place across the street, the owner comes up and says, hey, I'd love to rent it to you guys, and, you know, this is what it would be, you know, it, it allows him the ability to, to make a move. Can you make pizza? So if you're good with that, if somebody could just make a motion to have a five-member um, location committee to work with the superintendent when he deems it appropriate. Okay, so we have a motion. I'll to, second it. Emily will second it. You've got that, sir? Who moved, please? Laura. Laura Sebelia and Emily Long seconded it. Get the second. Seconded it. With members to be appointed by the you chair. Chair. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody <clears throat> not want to serve on the committee? Aye. Hi. So, <laughs> if, if, Bill, you, when you send your stuff out, just send anybody that's interested from Wyndham Central Board oh, to just send me an email. We have someone to nominate. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> who, who are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> we just people are here. Okay, so there, people we took care of your one ask. Okay. Okay. Is there a second one? one? Second one, uh, yes. Uh, so I'll be new, and I just would ask for your patience and your honesty. You know, I don't know everything. I'm going to do my best. I'm here learning. And yes. James on Friday. Bill. Really? I was at a different. This is a Wednesday. Too honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Marvel. <laughs> Abby had to wear a tie. Yeah. I had a different look. Steven, you didn't get the memo. Um, so, you know, I mean, when we're at board meetings and, you know, uh, like Emily gently suggests her rich stuff, I appreciate that, you know? So, just, you know, we're all in it for the same reason. We're all trying to go forward. So, you know, I am unbelievably open to uh, letting me know if I'm doing something that is annoying or not going well or uh, doesn't make sense. Um, please let me know. I'm trying to get good at this, and uh, I'll do the best I possibly can, and I look forward to the challenge. And um, I think we have a really exciting team of principals and an unbelievable central office. Um, I think we have a real opportunity to do something special here. Um, I just ask for you to, you know, give me that feedback on a regular basis. Well, I'll be the first one to be honest with you. I can definitely be honest with you. 
but that patience thing, I'll have to work on. <laughs> Fair enough. That's well, being honest, I'm right? being honest. <laughs> I hope you'll also do the same and share with us if we're not acting in a way that is beneficial to the SU as well. So I'm, sure. I, I'm positive we can make that happen. All right. Any other thoughts, comments? Looking forward to it. I'd like to just say, as having worked with Bill for the last seven years in Dover, I was very, very upset when we found out we were going to lose him. So it was okay that he was coming here, but um, you know, he's a great guy to work with, and I think you know he's Stephen was really good to work with. Bill will be really good to work with. I feel like the supervisor union, you know, hit another home run, um, and I'm really sorry about stealing the curriculum technology guy from you but we feel he's our third home run in Dover so um, and I, I look forward to it Bill and I, especially with all the changes coming so we really appreciate you coming on board with us because there's a lot of uncertainty in, in future positions as superintendent in the state can, can I comment because it's important to note that Matt Martin who now is going to be the principal at Dover was not just stolen from Wyndham Central, but it was also stolen from Leland and Gray. So I just, right. the, the reason I say it is because it's really important that we've done some incredible good work here. And part of that is because we have, um, we, we're doing something right, I think, mm -hmm. because we've been able to retain some incredibly um, talented staff here. And some of them have been around in this similar position for, what, Abby, how many years yeah. now? She's only 29. So 32 years. And some of us, have, some have moved through positions. But it's really pretty amazing, I think. And we're very fortunate. Abby started when she was in high school. <laughs> if I could interject, I think a lot of it has to do with this board. I think this board is incredibly supportive of all the administrators and teachers. And I sit, I've been sitting in these meetings for a long, long time. And it's always about kids with this school board. And I, as a special ed director, feel extremely lucky that I have this type of board because you guys aren't typical. You're here. Well, thank you. You're here. So as, as a final thought, I was in Twin Valley <coughs> High School on Monday, and I had three people come up to me and say, yeah, you're the guys that stole Bill from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that was seven, seven years ago, and they right. still... <laughs> And they're still mad about it. And Stephen came from over there, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were that's there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, my, my, there's one thing I want to do real quick. Next <laughs> Wednesday is a meeting at Lake Fairley. It starts at 1 o'clock, and it goes to 730. You get lunch and dinner. And you get lunch, like, as soon as you get up there. So don't eat on your ride up. I don't know. about a snack when you it's show a snack. up. Well, last year it was, like, a, a full-blown lunch. It was like a really? sandwich, yeah. Oh, oh, it was a big, yeah. Sure it was a big yeah. sandwich. And you mean Lake Mori, right? Yeah, Lake Mori, I'm sorry. Yeah. Lake, I said Fairly, right? Yeah. That's where That's the audition where the is. is that fairly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Out to lunch at Fairly. Send a whole bunch of people to the wrong place. So yeah. is there any, if there's people signed up, one of the things that, um, we were talking that there could, you know, there's a, the ability to carpool, if people want to carpool. Um, if there's anybody going up, maybe let Stephen know or send Stephen. Yeah, we do have to register the ones. I think they're four. Just four? I'm, I'm also going, Stephen. I don't think gone. you guys registered okay. me, but that's I'm three. You go through VSB. Uh, Bill's going, but I thought there were two other board members besides you and Joe. And um, last year, Jamaica went. Did they? Yep. Um, yeah. Stephanie and Stephanie. last year. You know, I don't have it in my head. Okay, well, we should just, let's just connect on that. I know we registered, but you, you could still probably, probably attend, although it is very well attended, I think. I'm just looking at the website, and it's saying that it's closed. For, yeah, but it but doesn't mean that you couldn't get on. I just will also say that it doesn't say a thing about um, food. food for lunch. So okay. if anybody is going, make sure you have something to eat. There is a break at 2.30. No, and a break at 4. Really disappointed. And dinner is at 6.30. I think it's starting later this year. Yeah. Starting yeah. later. Yeah. One or one thirty. One, one to seven thirty. They didn't want to give us lunch. Here we go. <laughs> right. And well, then you, you would have been you would have been paying for it if there had been lunch. <laughs> and then remember, in two weeks, May twenty fifth. Oh, I'm just I'm sorry. I want to make sure I was clear because I said the registration for the event has been closed, but to register, please call Carrie. So you can still register if anybody wants to go. And technically, and all every really board useful. chair is supposed to do training with the superintendent. Yeah. And this covers you. Eight on hours. That. 
Um, and then don't forget, in two weeks, we have the meeting here again for Act 46. Um, we've been doing that as a, a Wyndham, uh, as an executive committee, because they're the ones that have, have been conducting the study. Um, but we're going to warn it as both a, a regular board meeting and an executive committee, because if we have enough people to do the board meeting, it'll give more opportunity for people to vote if we want to do that, um, which I think is important, especially on, uh, you know, the, this will be the final um, the final meeting with our consultant, and then we have to decide where we want to go from there. So we got those two important upcoming meetings. One other clarification on that meeting. I will uh, warn the meeting uh, for the individual boards as well. In case you have a quorum here and you have to make a decision or feel like making a decision, comfortable making a decision, regarding uh, not necessarily the appointment of a committee but joining a study, then that could be accomplished that night, and your uh, your other boards will be here if you decided to join with a group of other boards or one other board. Then you could decide on the particulars, which is how are you going to have, what numbers are you going to have for representation on that study committee, because then your superintendent can apply for the grant and, and keep the ball rolling. Thank you, Stephen. Did you have a question, or you just? The 25th is a Wednesday. Yep. It says Monday. Is it Monday or oh, Wednesday? Oh, no, it's Wednesday. I'm sorry. Does it say Monday? We, we, we were having them on Monday while legislature Liar. was in Thank session. You. So good Wednesday. catch. So that's the guy behind the camera for all those of you at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flip it around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have we have two other things that we're going to do, and then we'll be adjourning. So just bear with us. Number one is we, we discussed we were going to have a legislative report um, from our, our three legislators. So, I don't, did Carolyn, you're the senior most legislator. You want to go first? Sure. Um, so, I chair House Agriculture and Forest Products, which has very relatively little to do with education. Um, and if you want to know what forest products have to do with it, it's from the time a tree is cut off the stump. So there are certain jurisdictional things that um, we, we have little turf wars over with natural resources and energy. Um, but the one thing I'd like to talk to and I uh, talk about, and I don't want to steal Laura's thunder, Go but ahead. it was um, really uh, a fabulous experience, was the Wardsboro kids getting involved with designating the gill feather turnip as a state vegetable. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I mean, based on all the reports, you'd never know we had anything to do with it mm -hmm. right at the moment. The senators are getting all the credit. Yeah. But <coughs> <laughs> it was fabulous to have the kids come uh, last year and again this year. They did a wonderful job in their presentation to our committee. They brought food samples, which is always a good strategy at the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hint. And um, if you can figure out how to work chocolate into it, that's a good thing, too. Um, <laughs> Chocolate-covered gill feather turnips. Wow. <laughs> gill feather, gill feather brownies or something. Sure um, but, and I will say that <clears throat> I took a certain amount of heat this year because the gill feather turnip was the first bill that passed through the House. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was a certain amount of uh, ridicule going on about designating a state vegetable. Uh, but I have stood strong and fast about what a wonderful experience this was for the children of Wardsboro and maybe a role model for students all around the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, not if People get to the legislature, they don't really know how laws are made. And this was a wonderful civics lesson, hands-on civics lesson for the kids of Wardsboro. Mm -hmm. I remember back maybe when I was a freshman, which was a while ago, uh, the kids from Fairfax uh, wanted the apple pie designated as the state pie. And we did do that. And I thought, you know, there were people who thought it was crazy. I thought it was great. And if you go to the, the language around the apple pie being the state pie, you'll see that there is a little bit of extra language that talks about how it should be served with either a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream or a wedge of cheese. So. <clears throat> we can have a sense of humor in legislation, but that, that was a wonderful experience this year. And um, I want to thank Laura for 
oh, no. her work on this and uh, for all the folks in Wardsboro who made it possible for those kids to come up and the bill signing is going to be May 24th at 2 p.m. in the ceremonial office uh, in Montpelier. So yeah, I, I would just like to say that um, you don't get that kind of questionable legislation, even though it was excellent, the kids did a great job done without um, someone who's been there for a long time kind of shepherding it. So uh, the chair of the House Agriculture Committee made sure that that happened and treated the kids well, and they got a great hearing in the Senate. It was, I'm really proud of it. I am, I am not at all, you know, I sorry that we did it. And, I, and for Wardsboro, I mean, what a great way to celebrate, you know, sm small town history. Yeah. You know? It's a good turnout, too. And right to you, too, Emily. Yeah. If you were we on the board in December, we all got we one. Yeah. 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 So. so that's my little bit of, if you have Thank any you. questions, I'm happy to try and answer. But um, Any questions for, no? Go ahead, Lord. We'll give you next, and we'll go to Ed last. So in my committee, we had um, tremendously good luck this year, not, and uh, we spent a lot of time. Um, we spent a lot of time on uh, really wrestling with some legislation that hopefully we will have a better result on um, in coming years. Uh, one of the bills that I am really, really sad about um, was our telecom bill, uh, which was passed um, pretty by a pretty significant margin in the House, and the Senate refused to take it up. Um, we this. Uh, this year really kind of started to come to light that we've got a much more significant problem than we thought we did in terms of cell and broadband coverage in the state. Um, there were some projects that we thought were covering more folks or would be covering more folks, and it appears that's not the case. Um, it also appears that, um, you know, our region and, you know, of course, areas of the Northeast Kingdom are going to be pretty significantly impacted by that. Um, I think the good news is, you know, we can finally stop waiting to see if that's what's gonna happen. Um, we had hoped this year to have um, an increase in funding. We're really making no investments, not in mm -hmm. ongoing technology, never mind building out. Mm -hmm. um, so we had hoped to pass uh, uh, um, some sustainable um, investment, a uh, uh, half a percent increase in the Vermont Universal Service Fund which would have um, raised about a uh, million and a half dollars a year. Not a lot of money, but um, better than what we will, will have, you know, which is maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars this year. Uh, <clears throat> so we will be back at it next year. That certainly was not something I was thinking that I would be spending a lot of time on going into the session, but you know, as this problem really started kind of unfolding and unveiling itself, um, it's pretty significant. So I spent a lot of time on that this year. Any questions, comments for Laura? And then I, I also oh. have one more. Well, you have um, a question too. Yes. Uh, you need to. Did you have a special page? Oh, I did have a special <laughs> page. Yes. We all. That's yes. another student. You know? Yes, yes. Um, I was fortunate enough to have my son um, come up and be a page for the last part of the session. Um, he was an absolute joy. He learned so much. I would encourage, encourage, encourage you to have your administrators, tell your parents, everybody. It is such an incredible opportunity for kids to learn and, you know, be exposed and ask questions. Um, eighth graders, it's usually a six-week session, um, but incredible opportunity. So, and it was just a joy to have him there at the end. He, the first day he was there, I have a very serious chair. And I sit towards the back of the room, and he threw open the door and said, Mama! And we were still <laughs> taking testimony, and I thought, oh my gosh, my chair is going to have a go. But he did. He was fine. It was good. Uh, the joys of parenting. Yes. yes. Well, uh, and also the Leela Gray board member, yes. uh, Kelly Warner's son. Yes, with Casey. Uh, yes, Trey. Oh, you were Trey. 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 I, I, yeah, I was. They played a lot of soccer. I am telling you, I was very fortunate to have driven Trey back and forth a few times that I was able to do it. It, it was a true pleasure to be able to do that, honestly. He, he, he was, his mom wouldn't mind me saying, she warned me ahead of time he likes to talk. I would not say that that was the issue. 
um, because we both like to talk, and we have a lot to talk about. Oh. He's, quite a, he's 14, and Make he's brilliant. Go by. He's a brilliant. year old boy that likes to talk is a rare animal, so that's wonderful. And I will say, he had a birthday in April where he got a new cell phone, his, I believe, first cell phone, and he still like to talk, That's even though he had a <laughs> cell phone. He wasn't on a cell phone? No, well, we'd be, you know, he was texting a little bit, but no. It was pretty they good. They can't use them. It was excellent. Oh, they're not? No. No, they had to no. stash them away while they were there. Yes. Are you all set, Laura? Okay. Thanks so much. Both, both, both it was, the, the pages were a pleasure, and I just love your son. Yeah, outside <laughs> playing soccer in their dress clothes. Yeah. So um, education, I'm on the Ed Committee. Um, at, you all know we started with a big bang this year with allowable growth, and um, it felt like we never actually went, uh, we en never ended the session last year. We sort of left with that high et level of um, stress and interest and started right up again with Act 46, um, the allowable growth piece. You all know how, how that got changed. Um, so I won't beleaguer into that. But after, after we had um, addressed that issue with Act 46, there were a number of other Act 46 um, bills, you know, questions, uh, things, changes that were coming to us. Uh, and our, our committee did take testimony on a number of them, even from, you know, some of our own legislators, on a number of, um, some were tweaks, some were major changes, some were, um, you know, uh, uh, repealing even, maybe not full repeal, but that type of thing. But our committee also felt that um, it was important that we were getting we were getting requests to change Act 46 before people really had even started implementing Act 46. So we really felt like it needed to take some time. So we did take quite a bit of testimony, and I would expect that there will be there were some there were some um, significant questions that will need to be addressed and if they can't be addressed through rules in the State Board of Education I would expect that there will be uh, tweaks. I said this last year I think to all of you that um, this is a significant piece of legislation so Carolyn can attest to this much better than I but a, but a significant piece of legislation like this rarely goes without having some adjustments to it down the road so I would expect that will happen at some point um, but but I don't expect major changes to it but I do there's one issue that came to us around um, merged districts who appoints um, a vacancy in a merged district because you will no longer have your local school board who currently does it now so that's just an example of one thing that needs to be addressed whether that can be addressed through through rules and the state board probably it needs to tweak there may end up it used to be select boards I don't know if everybody remembers that. <coughs> used to be select boards who did it, but I think that is one issue that needs to be addressed. So after we went through that piece, um, we spent quite a bit of time talking about both career and technical education and how, um, whether we're doing what we need to be doing with career and technical education in this state. There is, um, it's really important that our students go on to college and we all know um, that our college, the, the, our rate for kids going on to post-secondary or to college um, is not very high compared to our graduation rate, which is up in the 90s. Um, I don't know the exact one now, but at last I heard it was like 94%, I think, that of our kids graduate from high school, but only 60 or 61% of kids uh, goes to go, go on to college. Uh, so we do need to be talking about that. So, but we didn't, um, what came up even more importantly to us over the last two years was special education and the um, costs around special education and the questions about whether we really are delivering special education in the best way we can. And so we did pass a, a bill through the House and the Senate after um, wrangling on a conference committee for a while that has three, uh, three elements that I think are important that you all are aware of. And one is the first, and I think, you know, in the beginning, we all thought this was probably one of the more important things, and I think for the central office it will be, and that is simply aligning um, our, our funding and our expenses. We changed in Act 153, we, we, we now um, hire our staff, and in fact, in Wyndham Central, we actually hire our support staff as well. Not, that's not true of all supervisory unions around the state. But all supervisory unions are required to hire their, their teaching staff 
their special ed teaching staff at the central office. But the funding still goes to the school districts. And so now we've taken that whole list of statutes, and there was like 28 pages in that bill, um, to actually align this, the funding to go where um, the expenses incurred or the, the services are delivered. So sometimes it's still the supervisor union. I mean, sometimes still a school district, but, it, but it's often uh, moved to the supervisor union. That's the first part of it. The second part is a study to look at um, different models of funding special education in the state of Vermont. And that, want, that is to include a census block model, which would be um, you know, based on the number of students. You know, so, but there, this study will take place, I think, uh, I think it needs to be completed by December. Don't hold me on that one, I'd have to look it up. But uh, maybe even October. I can't remember the date, but there is a date where a report needs to come. Um, and I think that this is going to be very helpful to us because we really do need to know, especially with the changes that are going on around uh, governance in the state, how, how are we funding special education the best way we can? And I would suggest we're probably not. So I'm hoping we'll get something out of this. And the third one is, and Abby knows about this because I got an email from her almost immediately after this passed, this, this special ed bill passed, um, that, that well, this is a piece that had been taken out. It was passed in the House and taken out by the Senate, and then um, we had a conference committee of which I was, I, I don't know if I was fortunate enough or, <laughs> or not to chair the conference committee and spent two days literally getting all kinds of steps on my Fitbit running around the state house, up and down stairs, trying to chase down senators to get um, uh, support for putting this item back, this, this um, pilot program back into the uh, special ed bill, which we were able to do. We, we did, I'll, I'll speak about the funding about it in a minute, but what it is is a pilot program um, that takes, that, that is, allows up to 10 supervisory unions to um, work through the AOE with a consult consulting firm to look at both um, how we're delivering special education. One of the issues that have come up that has come up over the last two years, some of it based on a study that came out of um, UMass that we took testimony on last year about the use of paraeducators and whether that is really the most effective way to be um, teaching our kids who are on IEPs. And the study out of UMass basically said um, what, what the most effective way to teach kids is to be in front of a teacher, a professional teacher. And so that's part of this study. We'll be looking at that. Um, the, the adequacy study, whether people like the adequacy study or not, which is a hundred, it's 300 and some odd pages that came out of Act 46, also did point to uh, the potential of $140 million in savings in special ed. So this is really important. So the other part of this pilot program is how, how looking at the, the funding stream and how, whether we're best utilizing our staffing um, to, to, uh, in a cost-effective way. So that's the pilot program. Unfortunately, there's only 10 supervisory unions. They are supposed to be um, of differing sizes and governance models so that um, we get a good sense of what the state of Vermont looks like. So that's important. It, the bill that, as it left the House, had $200,000 in it, which would cover those 10. Uh, <coughs> in conference committee, we, the, the real issue was around money. They didn't want, the senators didn't want to take any money out of the Ed Fund. But we did manage to continue with 25000 in the Ed Fund and then $100,000 <coughs> of reversion funds, which are uh, uh, any unspent funds, if they're available, will go to this pilot program um, at the end of the fiscal year 16 will be reverted into fiscal year 17, uh, from fiscal year 17. So we were assured by the Agency of Education that it looked like we were going to have some reversion funds. So I do believe we don't have 200,000, but we have 175, and I think we're still gonna be able to make that. We're ho I'm hoping we'll still be able to make 10 supervisory unions uh, work with that. So. Abby um, did get a hold of me and said, what can we do to be part of this? Because it really is something, and maybe you want to speak to it, because I'm sure you looked at it. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I, I um, uh, emailed our consultant, um, Alicia Hanrahan, who's our uh, special ed consultant at the state, to see who I contact to be part of the study. 
She gave me the two names and I put it in and I'm so, I got a response saying, um, they I think we were the first ones that put her name in, um, hot off the press, but we should be getting more um, information in October. Right. Bill hasn't even been signed. <coughs> but, um, it, it was, Abby, actually, you, you, you may be the first one who contacted the agency, but you're not the first one who said, wait a minute, how can, because I've already received several other Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, asks about it because you know there's a great need out there, yes. and people yes. school just, supervisor unions are really looking for help, and and is there a better way, and so they want to be involved with this. So I think that's really encouraging, and I'm hoping at the other side of this, we'll um, we'll get some good information, and then the the one thing that's important, and, and I I don't know whether you were told this, but these ten supervisor unions will then become models for the rest of the school. Um, the supervisory unions around the state. So this is something that will go out from those 10. So, hoping that will work. And hopefully save more effect, have save money and be more effective. Yes, both. Both. Instruction for all. both, absolutely. So We did try for a staff member in that, but we, that got ripped out in our own building. We tried to um, get another staff member at the AOE. The, the, I just will say, this is probably something that's really important to note. For all of you, the agency of education is um, woefully understaffed. And I think that's true of many of our agencies, and Carolyn knows this as well, and so does Laura. But um, the agency of education has lost 40% um, of their staff since 2008, and and they're still losing staff. Um, and so, we in the um, House Education Committee, and I think the Senate Education Committee fought for it a little bit too tried very hard to get another, uh, get some more resources for the Agency of Education, but we weren't successful um, much in that. But we'll continue to do that, because there's a lot of need out there. But we're the ones who use them. Well, the other thing to keep in mind is there have been a lot of early retirements to enable the agency to yep. continue to function, yep. and then that makes a transition of, you know, a lot of new people, and then you have a hard time retaining those people if there really isn't the security of you know, what's going to happen in the future. So it, it's not just the issue of the reduction and the limited resources. There are these other, uh, those of us that work with the agency on more, more or less on a daily basis recognize that, you know, in some cases there's a, there's a different name or the same name in a different position or wearing another hat in addition to the previous <coughs> hat. That's certainly true of our 46 designee in the agency, Donna Rosa Savage. Yeah. So, they're much more but you know they're they're fabulous people. I mean, I, you know, I, they're <laughs> they're dedicated and they're really you know effective. But um, so I did, I want to make one other quick comment. I was really excited two years ago. Um, Ann Manwaring had been a, a representative from Wilmington, and she'd worked a lot with Dover and, and was well known in the area. She owned a business in Dover. And she had been on finance, I think, or I'm not sure, appropriations, which is a pretty big committee. Or, I mean, it's a, a well thought of committee, I guess. There's one a lot of people want to get on. And last year, she wanted to transfer over to education. And Emily, being a new representative, was on education too. And I, it was the, I was trying to look. It's been a long time since two people from Wyndham County had been on um, House Ed. And that was a pretty powerful thing because it, you know, they gave us a few extra uh, pushes if we needed it with that. And Ann decided to retire this year. She announced early on and she won't be back. Um, but I, I think it's also a loss because she was really looking out and did a lot of stuff with Act 46, um, you know, for Wyndham Southwest. And, and she'd always been in contact with us. And um, we, you know, had invited her to some of the, the Wyndham Central meetings, too. So she, She's not done with education. No, <laughs> she says she's not done, but she's not going to be a representative. So okay. I just, you know, I'd like to thank you guys. I, I, I had talked to Emily earlier. I tried to talk to Carolyn, and I couldn't get hold of Laura. She won't call me back anymore. <laughs> so just to give them a warning. But I thought it would be good for them to say something. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah. So I'd like, Rich, Stephen, can you? Yeah. I'm sorry. I have one more thing. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so with Act 46, we are focusing on educational quality. I think we're making actually, I, as uncomfortable as it is, I think we're actually seeing the possibilities for um, some pretty significant increases in quality. We did have a great reminder, though, um, that we still have the fundamental problem of our um, education financing system mm -hmm. being broken. 
um, right at the end uh, with the extension of TIF districts. I don't know if folks are familiar with what those are. Those are tax, it's an economic development tool and people don't know, I'm, I do economic development. All right. not in this session. So it's actually a really important tool. And what it allows is a municipality to be able to <coughs> exempt a certain, certain, um, certain properties or areas of a town, um, portions of their property taxes to invest in public infrastructure there. What does it stand for? Tax Increment Financing District. Thank you. Um, and you allow that tax money to go into the public infrastructure instead of to the town general fund or the state education fund um, so that you can have an improved property value which long term should generate additional education um, property taxes. So we had an extension this year um, come in for a, a new project, a very important project in downtown Burlington um, as well as one in Milton. Um, and those are going to have very significant impacts on our state education fund. And they will be discussed zip when we talk about needing to control education funding. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that is something that um, mm -hmm. I was actually kind of happy that that happened at the end and kind of a reminder that we still have not really, we have a system, a statewide system, a statewide fund that is coming in that there is, you know, we've just got so many levers on it. We don't have a hand. We don't have a handle on all the levers, and so um, yeah, just put put that out there. You know, important to know that all of these different things and they're well, they're important. Yes. Well, these these that kind of a tool is very very important. <coughs> you know, these things don't happen in little isolation isolation chambers. You know, and they're all kind of connected. So. Oh my gosh! Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yes. Stephen, <laughs> could you come around and come back here for me? So I just I want to take just two minutes and we'll get you out of here before nine, which will be earlier, especially since we started late. Because I always promise Carolyn we won't be here all night. This is really the last board meeting we have with with our superintendent of, of six years. Um, Stephen John, I don't know if any of you know, Laura had him for a teacher. I don't know if anybody else had him for a teacher. Um, he was on the board for a He was yeah, assistant principal at, at um, Leland and Gray. He's well known. He's the town moderator in Marlboro. You guys have been putting up with him for a lot of years. Or he's been putting um, up with us, one of the yeah. other. Either way. <laughs> I, I actually read, this year I got elected moderator in Dover for the town side, and I read the little booklet, and it said, Ruling the Unruly is what the town meeting moderator is supposed to do. But this is really our, our last meeting with Stephen as a superintendent. So, again, that thing about having people in the legislature to help you out is really great. So. We wanted to do something for Stephen. We weren't sure what to do, and I talked to Emily and Alicia a little bit. We had a couple meetings, and we, you know, didn't know exactly how to go about it. So Stephen, we went to the legislature and, and talked to them about you a little bit. And Emily has something to read to you because. <laughs> okay. So it wasn't. So it wasn't just me, although um, Laura, Laura and I started this. She she ran down the lunch council for me one day when I could not get down there. Thank you, Laura. Um, this is a resolution. Um, it, it's not framed all the best. You may want to reframe it, but it's a resolution honoring honoring uh, Stephen John, and I'm going to read it to all of you. But it's I just want you all to know that it's signed by all Wyndham County legislators, including our senators. Um, so I think this is really important. And, and the input from this, Stephen, came from your staff. From people well, from in central an awful office, lot of people. Um, other superintendents, other principals, people that you've worked with and you haven't in a few years. So a lot of people contributed. So this is a House concurrent resolution honoring public educator and Marlboro Town moderator Dr. Stephen John. And it names all the um, representatives and senators. I told you they're all of us from <coughs> the county. I made sure that everybody in. And I and I if I could just say. The second I mentioned it to every single one of them, they all knew you, That's and true. they were all, please give me that. I don't even need to read it. I want to sign it. So it was yeah. really quite nice. It's all about um, relationships. It is all about relationships. So it starts with, whereas Dr. Stephen John earned a bachelor d bachelor's degree in psychology from Occidental College, a master's degree in education at Antioch Graduate School of New England, and more recently a doctorate in education leadership policy and assessment at the University of Massachusetts and whereas he started his career as an educator serving in the Peace Corps as a math and science teacher stationed in Malaysia 
And whereas, on returning to the United <coughs> States, his first job was at the Whitingham School, originally from 1973 to 1990, and later from 1993 to 1999, and whereas, during his years at the Whitingham School, Stephen John taught in the classroom, served as the middle school coordinator, then principal, was named the University of Vermont's Outstanding Educator in 1985, okay. and implemented an inclusive town meeting form of school governance. And where, you might for, be forgetting some of these things you've done. My, my president already, <laughs> moderator, moderator one. And whereas, during a three-year hiatus, 1990 to 1993, <laughs> at the Phillips Middle School in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Dr. Stephen John taught science and coached the winning team at a regional science Olympiad. And whereas in 1999, Stephen John assumed a new position as the Leland and Gray Middle, School, Middle School's principal, where he supervised curriculum innovations, including the introduction of a course in Chinese, advised on a successful building addition, actually worked on a lot more than one, <laughs> implemented waste recycling building wide, improved nutrition in the school's cafeteria and oversaw the installation of an information system enabling parents to review students' homework. That's right, power school. Power school, and whereas Stephen John served as president of the Vermont Association for Middle Level Education and has many other <coughs> professional affiliations, of which we really could not name all of them or we would yeah. run off the page, yeah, so a there are a number of them. And whereas in 2009, after completing his doctoral degree, Dr. Stephen John was appointed superintendent of the Wyndham Central Supervisory Union and has provided expert guidance to all of its schools. And whereas <coughs> since 2002, Dr. Stephen John has ably, uh, has served ably as Marlboro's town moderator, having previously held the office of town auditor. I didn't know that. That's true. And whereas in 2016, Dr. Stephen John is concluding his outstanding leadership tenure at WCSU now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the General Assembly honors public educator and Marlboro Town moderator Dr. Stephen John, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be directed to send a copy of this resolution to Dr. Stephen John. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta make the rounds, guys. Where is it? Where is it? You can probably copy around. That that is something that's important to note. This is also on the legislative website. So if anybody wants to see it themselves, that's the way it's gonna get in the hands. He probably is going to want to read and frame this. It's really hard to say that I have a very talented artistic husband who helps. Just give him up. Other than that. Amazing. Actually, that is the truth. There had to be some decision. Yeah. about things that we couldn't fit on there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Stephen has a li it's true. There, there's just a couple of things I want the public to know, Stephen. Uh, this, this year we'll also conclude uh, my service to the Vermont uh, Standards Board for Professional Education and Educators, and that is overseeing all the teacher preparation programs and the licensing for educators in Vermont. I've been chair for the past uh, for, uh, four years. And uh, that's been a really an honor. Yeah, and the other thing that isn't going to come up here is that I was also uh, president of the teachers' union and negotiator, chief negotiator for the, for the teachers' union at Whitingham, and started the union in Whitingham. So those of you that want to know about somebody on both sides of the table, that's well, me. <laughs> just as an aside, when Stephen was the middle school principal in Dover, Dover sent more students to Leland and Gray than they did to every other school that we sent students to, including Brattleboro, 
uh, at that time it was Wilmington and Whitingham and private schools. And Stephen would do a great job. He'd have a, a sixth grade jamboree thing up yeah. at the dam. And a lot of, lot of really interesting stuff. So Stephen really you know, worked hard and did a lot to promote Leland and Gray and promote our district. And we're very fortunate. And Stephen, the way you decided to go out was the classic. Um, you know, Dr. John, you did a great job. We're very glad to have all worked with you. Well, it, it's an ending and it's a commencement. You know, I just wish you all the best. I know you're going to do great things for all the kids. And I'll certainly be hanging around the neighborhood if you have a question I want to call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you so much. This is signed by Speaker of the House, Chef Smith, oh, and Chef Phil Smith, Scott, um, yeah, President too. of the Senate. Yeah. And our, and our and uh, clerk. Right. Yeah. Ready? Well, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all go home and uh, just. Uh, I would like to make a motion to adjourn on that note. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes, sir. Thank you, folks. We'll see you in two weeks. Second. Thank you. 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 Th